Welcome everyone to History Gone Wilder, part of Half History Will Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and after George McClellan worked his way up the peninsula to the gates of Richmond, Virginia, the new commander, Robert E. Lee, would use Longstreet's division and others to hammer the Union Army back down the peninsula. On June 3rd, Robert E. Lee, the new commander of the Confederate Army Guard in Richmond, called together his division commanders. At the meeting, some of the division commanders talked at length about what should be done to drive the Union Army of the Potomac away from the capital, but Longstreet sat silently, preferring to express his opinions to Lee in private. The meeting ended without Lee making any declarations as to what to do next. The next day, Longstreet was called to Lee's headquarters. In private, they discussed what Longstreet believed to be the best course of action, a strong attack against the Union right near Mechanicsville. After the meeting, Lee wrote to President Davis that Longstreet is a capital soldier. His recommendations hitherto have been good, and I have confidence in him. Lee's aides also saw that Longstreet was quickly becoming a close confidant of Lee. Lee placed all of his troops in readiness as he formulated a way to land a significant blow against the Union Army. On June 16th, he ordered Stonewall Jackson from the Shenandoah Valley. That same day, Longstreet arrived and suggested that Jackson be recalled from the valley. Lee confided in Longstreet that Stonewall was already on the way and outlined the plan of attack for Jackson to assault the isolated corps under Fitzjohn Porter to the north, while the rest of the army attacked the remaining enemy forces to the south. Longstreet and Lee worked to smooth out the plan, and it was decided to use the majority of the Confederate army to attack the isolated corps, while the rest held a defensive position to the south. On June 23rd, a dust-covered Jackson rode to Lee's headquarters, having rode around 60 miles on horseback to reach Lee. Longstreet, A.P. Hill, and D.H. Hill would join them. Lee then explained his plan and then excused himself, asking the division commanders to work out the details. Longstreet turned to Jackson and said because Stonewall's troops had the furthest to travel, he should set the time and date of the attack. Jackson stated June 25th at daylight. Longstreet made Jackson aware that felled trees and cavalry may block his path, so he may desire a further out date. So Jackson stated the 26th at daylight. Lee re-entered the room and was made aware of the time and date. The generals discussed the matter for a little longer, then Lee gave verbal orders to each man. Written orders would follow. Jackson was to turn Porter's flank while A.P. Hill, once he heard of Jackson's arrival, would assault Mechanicsville and drive south clearing the way for Longstreet and D.H. Hill's divisions. However, on the 26th, the divisions of A.P. Hill, D.H. Hill, and Longstreet sat for the greater part of the day with no sign of Jackson. By 3 p.m., A.P. Hill, tired of waiting, attacked without Jackson. D.H. Hill and Longstreet would follow A.P. Hill's division, but do little fighting. The next morning, the attacks commenced again, with A.P. Hill driving forward to attack the Union position, but Longstreet arrived late to the site of the engagement. For over two hours, A.P. Hill's men assaulted the works of Fitzjohn Porter's corps. Finally, Longstreet arrived to relieve the pressure on Hill's men. The combined forces of the Confederate divisions of both Hills, Longstreet, and Jackson broke the Union line at Gaines Mill. Rest and maneuvering was done the next day. On June 30th, at Glendale, Longstreet would command both his and A.P. Hill's divisions against the Union Army. Artillery opened up the fight with artillery shells coming dangerously close to President Jefferson Davis and Robert E. Lee, who came closer to the front lines to observe the battle. A.P. Hill ordered the men to the rear. Longstreet sent in the brigades of Micah Jenkins, James Kemper, and Cadmus Wilcox initially. Many of the brigades lost half their strength against the entrenched Federals. Longstreet hesitated to send in both his and Hill's entire division because he was waiting on Jackson and Huger to make their own attacks. However, he couldn't wait any longer. The three brigades now engaged needed support, so he threw in Pickett's brigade and one of Hill's brigades. Soon, however, Longstreet called for all of Hill's division to charge into the fray. They turned the tide of the battle in favor of the Confederacy. Union General McCall was captured in the fighting, and as he was being brought to the rear, Longstreet removed his glove and extended his hand to McCall, whom he had served under in the 4th Infantry before the war. McCall refused his hand and said, Excuse me, sir. I can stand defeat but not insult. As the prisoner walked on, Longstreet got back to work. Lee and Longstreet and the rest of the divisions would give chase to the Federals again, but an opportunity had been lost that day. 
Longstreet and Hill engaged the enemy and fought hard, but Jackson and the other division commanders had not attacked as ordered. Lee met with Longstreet, Hill, and Magruder when a federal surgeon found them. He had been left with the wounded at Willis Church, and Jackson had sent him to Lee for supplies and protection, which Lee granted. Before the doctor left, Longstreet inquired about Union troops in his front. The doctor replied that he had been in McCall's division and knew nothing of other units. Longstreet stated, Well, McCall is safe in Richmond, but if his division had not offered the stubborn resistance it did on this road, we would have captured your whole army. Never mind, we will do it yet. Lee asked Longstreet to ride with him to Willis Church where D.H. Hill was. There, Hill told them that if McClellan was at Malvern Hill, they had better leave him alone. Longstreet jokingly stated, Don't get scared now that we have got him whipped. The division commanders of Magruder, Huger, and Jackson attacked Malvern Hill. Lee assigned Longstreet the task of coordinating some of the units on the Confederate left. What followed was a destructive scene of carnage as brigades by themselves and sometimes accompanied by a fellow brigade repeatedly attacked the Union soldiers on Malvern Hill. Lead flew from the Federal guns with accuracy and destroyed many regiments as they charged up the hill. D.H. Hill would write after the battle that it was not war, it was murder. The next day, Longstreet met with Lee and Jackson at the Poindexter home. Longstreet asked if Lee was sending anyone into the city. Lee said yes, an orderly will be going soon. Can we do anything for you? Yes, Longstreet said. Send Mrs. Longstreet word I am alive yet. She is up at Lynchburg. Lee preferred not to have an orderly telegraph an officer's wife, so he advised Longstreet to write her a note instead. Lee then asked Longstreet what he thought of the fight at Melbourne Hill. He said, I think you hurt them about as much as they hurt you. To which Lee replied, then I am glad we punished them well at any rate. Jeb Stewart and Jefferson Davis then walked into the room. Davis had been at the front since the 30th. When the generals and the president finished talking, Charles Marshall of Lee's staff introduced a flask presented to him from General McCall. Lee, Jackson, and Stewart declined to drink. Davis took a little sip and Longstreet took what one observer said was a soldierly swig. Then the rest of the contents were swallowed up by the staff members. The seven-day campaign had drained the Confederacy of manpower, producing over 20,000 casualties alone for the South, but it had eliminated the threat against the Confederate capital and put the Union Army on the defensive. One of Longstreet's biographers wrote, Longstreet emerged from the campaign as Lee's most reliable subordinate commander. At Gaines Mill and at Glendale, he had handled the command with a confidence and calmness that became a hallmark of his battlefield leadership. Less than a month after his performance at Seven Pines, Longstreet had redeemed himself. After being congratulated for the successful campaign, Lee stated, Longstreet was the staff in my right hand.